Welcome or welcome back. I'm Kelsey and oh man, it has been a hot second since I made a video. The combination of moving to New York City and having to put together my workspace and job hunting has really just taken up so much of my time and energy. So thank you for sticking around and thank you to all of the new people who just found the channel because we just reached a thousand subscribers and I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. This journey has been long. It's been a year and a half since I started my channel and I am honestly really excited excited for all of the new videos that I want to create for you guys. So what you are seeing right now is the watercolor study for the oil painting that we will be working on in this video. So I started this oil painting before I even moved to New York City. It was in my last vlog before New York City, so you can see the beginning of the painting there, but I was sort of stuck with this painting and I really wanted to try something new with it and explore some color palettes and effects that I've never done before. So we end up going with this very warm, glowy, yellow kind of color palette where there's this glow from the windows and I take it even a step further in the oil painting. But yeah, so while I work on this painting, I wanted to talk about how I decided to become an artist and pursue a career in this really creative field. But before that, you need to get some context. I need to talk about how the past year and a half, and I guess the quote unquote panoramic as a whole, completely changed my life and my ideas for what I wanted my life to look like. A little over a year and a half ago, I was a political science major, taking courses in conflict studies, international human rights, international security, and foreign policy. I got the scholarship to go to DC and spent a weekend touring the headquarters for multiple NGOs and the Secret Service building, and I was even applying for jobs at places like the CIA, though I did get rejected. Um, I have the rejection letter if you guys ever want to see it, but my intended career path absolutely did not involve art. I was setting myself up for a career in foreign policy and intelligence, probably one of the furthest fields from art that you can possibly get, but I'd always been interested in art. And before I launched this channel, I even had some of my abstract work in galleries around where I went to college. I'd always been passionate about making art and constantly found myself daydreaming about running my own business. But these several things that I tried never really worked out or I didn't work at them long enough or hard enough to see them pan out. And because I had this limiting belief that I couldn't make money as an artist and also I had this perspective that because I had worked so hard in high school to get a college education that I could afford, I got a full ride scholarship at a small liberal arts school in Minnesota. And um, I didn't want to quote unquote waste that by majoring in art or like throwing that opportunity away, so to speak. So I wanted to choose something that would make me money and that I was passionate about. And in my case, that was political science. And I sort of had this political awakening in high school I went to high school in Alabama and I was a member of my high school's GSA, our Gay Street Alliance Club. And um, <laughs> boy oh boy, that went about as well as you would have expected given that it was Alabama. And we had to fight every single year for our club to continue existing because there were constantly petitions by parents and people concerned quote unquote in the community and i remember this one time where i was um representing my club at this like club fair kind of thing where there are all of these booths representing all these different extra extracurricular activities and clubs and you had this opportunity to sort of market your group to the other students these parents and these other students would hand these flyers back to me once i explained to them that we were advocating for gay rights it was it was horrible um, so that was my political awakening and I became really passionate about wanting to affect positive change in the world and so I majored in political science and eventually my interest got more specific and I started getting more interested in foreign policy and intelligence. So I started to sort of market myself um, as a progressive person who could maybe, you know, do, do good things in that field. And when the pandemic hit, all of my internship applications were rejected for the third year in a row and I was stuck away from home in this housing situation with some people that I really didn't get along well with. From March to May of 2020, I was in a really bad place mentally. I was thinking to myself that I was a failure, that I wasn't going to achieve the success that I wanted to in my career, and that frankly, I had to go back to the drawing board. I had to think of something else um, because clearly political science was not working for me and I needed to I needed to think of another idea. But it wasn't just the fact that I wasn't achieving success in political science that drove me to reconsider things. It was the fact that like the more 
coursework in political science that I did, the more entrenched in politics that I became, the more that I researched, the more that I became aware and informed, um, the more pessimistic I became about our future, and the more that I had to turn to art and oil painting to maintain my mental health and sort of keep myself grounded and sane. Um, and so it became, art became this necessary part of my life in order to um, keep me happy. And the more that I started thinking about it as like a hobby, as activism and affecting positive change in politics, the thing that I could do on the side, um, donating my time to campaigns that I cared about, donating to candidates, progressive and leftist candidates that are really doing great things and have great ideas. Um, the more that I treated political science like a hobby and art as my career, my job, the happier I was. Like just, I mean, it was like flipping a switch overnight. I just felt so much lighter. And I realized that for someone like me who's already endured a lot of trauma, having to constantly put myself in bad situations where I had to develop a really thick skin and a really clear work-life balance and sort of not think about all of the horrible things happening in the world, um, that wasn't a thing that I was built for. Um, so, I don't know, I realize it sounds selfish. <laughs> I realize it sounds selfish, but at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for your mental health because um, activism and affecting good change in the world, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. You have to take care of yourself to ensure that you can keep doing the work. So I went back home in May of 2020 and I made a ton of art that summer. I started my channel and I started taking my art more seriously. The more art that I made that summer, the more I began to seriously consider a career as a full-time artist and I began to have a clearer idea of what I wanted that to look like for me. So I made an insane amount of art and I started to think about what I wanted my career to look like, what I wanted this sort of roadmap to be, because in political science, there's sort of a clear-cut way of getting in the scene, of entering the field. You get an internship, you get published in like a paper or something in a conference, you get a job, and then you get a different job, and then you sort of move up the ladder. But in art, there are so many ways of developing a career. There are so many ways of making a living. You can be an animation artist. You can market your work towards like corporate settings and offices and stuff. You can go the traditional gallery route. You can like, you know, pull a Lee Ellickson and get a Patreon and a YouTube channel and all of that other stuff. And there are so many other fields. Um, there are so many sort of ways to get to my ultimate goal that I had to figure out which one I wanted and I eventually realized that making videos and just filming myself, talking to you guys, making art, sharing my tips and what I think it takes to succeed and sort of my, um, my experience here, that I sort of discovered that, you know, making videos and creating an online shop and you know making classes and stuff like that was really what I felt compelled by. It was the reason that I got up in the morning. And when I started making art and when I started taking my interest in art more seriously as a career, like really seriously, like I sort of dabbled in this idea before and time and time again written it off once I hadn't achieved the success that I wanted initially but it takes a lot of consistent effort and you have to not be discouraged if you don't make it right away because it really does take a ton of work. I've been working at this channel for a year and a half and I just now hit a thousand subscribers. Thank you guys so much again, by the way, but I felt tempted to give up repeatedly and I just didn't do it. I just made more videos. I just constantly improved my content and I knew that, you know, eventually, um, I'll get there and it's kind of crazy. It is <laughs> kind of crazy. You have to have this ruthless and relentless hope and confidence in yourself and your abilities, but eventually you make it um, or you get positive results and that helps drive you forward, but you do have to have this kind of crazy confidence in yourself and then, you know, 
ignore other people's ideas of what success looks like. I mean, I still have friends who think that I won't be able to make a career as an artist um, because, you know, they just don't come from this background and they don't have the knowledge that I do. And that's okay. They're allowed to be skeptical, but I can't take their skepticism to heart because that would just discourage me. Um, you need to have this sort of single-minded focus on your goal and just put your head down and do the work because that's what gets you the results that you want. Worrying won't, having a limiting belief about your abilities and your skills and your probability of success won't help you succeed. You just need to do the work. Yeah, I got a comment a few months ago asking about when I decided I wanted to become a full-time artist in terms of like when I thought my art was good enough. Honestly, that never even once factored into the calculus for me. So, I mean, I don't know, I'm still garbage at drawing people, but I'm okay at painting landscapes, I'm okay at painting houses, or at least I like to think so with this painting. I think that's coming along pretty well, but I think there's a lot of value in terms of showing people your process, and not just your process, but like your skill set advancing just a little by little every single day, every single painting, showing yourself getting better, showing your um, showing your journey as an artist, and that's fundamentally, I think, what this channel is. I'm showing, I'm showing you my journey as an artist getting to where I want to be, and I am sharing the experiences and the knowledge that I've developed and acquired along the way, and that's, that's really what this channel is. So, like, no, I don't think I ever once thought about whether my art was good enough, because I don't think that really matters, um, but also that, like, I know my art has value, um, I know that I'm good enough, and some days I have doubts about this, but other times I'll make a really great painting, and I'll realize that, like, I don't have to be an expert at everything in order for my art to have value. And I think there's, and I think there's a real danger to not wanting to pursue a career in art seriously because you think that your art isn't quote-unquote good enough. Because if you're in that mindset, the probability is decently high that you're never going to think that your art is good enough. So, I mean, why let that stop you, right? If this is something that you want, you should go after it. I'm in a situation right now where I'm not making any money off of my art. I'm... <laughs> still in this, um, I don't know, maybe it's a fantasy. Maybe I'm actually gonna be wrong and I'll have to sell my hair to a wig shop, but I want it. I want it as much as I want to continue breathing. Before I started on this painting, I wasn't able to paint for four weeks and it felt like I was going crazy. I just like needed this thing in my life and I it took me a hot second to realize what I was missing. And then I realized like, oh, the reason that I'm feeling so irritated, so unfulfilled is because I haven't painted it in a long time and that's why. And it's, it's just this necessary part of my life for me. It's this, I don't know, it's this non-negotiable. And if art is non-negotiable for you, if you want this to be your full-time career, because let me be super, super honest, you can be passionate about art and not have it be your career, and that is fine. That is a totally valid decision. But if this is something that you really want, then you should start putting in the work and you should start doing it. I am continually fantasizing about the day that I am going to be able to do this full time and that, yeah, it just, it brings you so much joy. Anyway, we did not end up finishing this painting in this video, but I think we are at a solid start with it. And if you're interested in being the very first person to see when it's done, you should check out my Patreon. If you join my Patreon, you get exclusive access to one video every single month that is only for patrons, and you will get awesome access to exclusive content that won't be hosted anywhere else. If that's something that you're interested in, consider checking it out, and I thank you so much again for watching this video and subscribing and liking and commenting and all of that stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.